Hello everyone, I am Tanvi Kaur and I welcome you to this series called RBI 247. In this very series, we pick up some topics which are quite important from the current financial scenario and we try to discuss the core concepts with the help of different questions. So before beginning up with the today's session, for all those who are watching this video for the very first time, you can subscribe to our channel and press this bell icon for all latest updates and notifications. You can also join our telegram group where we share some free quizzes, the updates for all our latest videos and you can also post your queries over here. So before getting started, there is another piece of information for you all. As you all know that exams are quite near, so we have come up with the crash course which will help you to get prepared for your RBI grade B exams. So this crash course has been launched at a special discount offer of 40%. In order to avail this discount, you can use this coupon code which is mentioned over here. So for further details, you can visit our website and fetch those details and take up this course which will help you prepare better for your exams. So let's get started. This is the very first question which says the government budgeted rupees 1.75 lakh crores from stake sale in the public sector companies and the financial institutions including two PSU banks and one insurance company in the year 2021-2022. So what does this stake sale refers to? Now what they are talking about over here? They are saying that the government was having some public sector undertaking banks and an insurance company and it is thinking to sell its stake in those companies. By selling those stake, it is thinking that it will be able to raise some amount of money which it can use for different purposes. So we have to be clear about the concept of investment and disinvestment in order to answer this question. Now when you are buying some asset or if there is a firm and you are buying some shares or of that firm or you are buying some stake of that firm, we call it as an investment. And when you are withdrawing the money you have invested somewhere, we call it disinvestment. So what you are doing, you are taking away the money which you had invested. So the opposite of investment is disinvestment. So what government is doing over here, government is thinking that it will sell its stake which it had in two public sector undertaking banks and an insurance company. So taking away your share from where you had invested or from where you had a stake is known as disinvestment. So the answer to this question should have been disinvestment. But there is another term with which you all can get confused and may not be able to answer such questions. So that term is privatization. What is exactly the difference between disinvestment and privatization? Although this question, in this question the option nowhere has the option privatization but if the option would have been here then you would have got confused. So what is the difference between privatization and disinvestment? For example, government is having 100% stake in say some firm, right? And it is planning either to sell the majority stake or to sell its minority stake. Right. Suppose the government thinks that it will sell 25% of its stake. Less than 50, it is a minority stake. Or the government may plan to sell say 59% stake in some firm that is majority stake. And that also it thinks to sell it to some private firm, right? So when government is selling lesser amount of share, if government will sell the minority stake, what will happen? The ownership, the management, the control will still be in the hands of government only. So that is an example of disinvestment, right? Now, instead of this, when government plans to sell majority stake, if government is selling 59% stake to some private entity, then that private entity will be the owner, it will handle the management of that firm. So we call that privatization and not disinvestment. Okay, so you should be clear about these two concepts and should not use them interchangeably. When you are disinvesting your majority stake, instead of calling it disinvestment, we call it privatization when that sale is made to a 
private player. So this was the difference between the two and the question here asked about the stake sale. In this question as privatization is not mentioned, neither the government stated whether it will be selling the minority stake or majority stake and whether it will be selling to private players or not. So this um, in this it is not clear whether it's an example of privatization or of disinvestment because privatization is not mentioned over here and they are not saying anything about minority or majority stake. We will consider the answer to be option C, disinvestment. Now let's move on to question number 2. So what does this question say? Which of the following correctly states the objectives of disinvestment? Now, as I've already discussed the concept of disinvestment with you, you should be very clear that what it's actually focusing on. But before reading out these statements, let me still discuss some more objectives of disinvestment. See, disinvestment is selling your stake. Now, why would government like to sell its stake in any firm? Government may be running some firm, but it may not be able to reap the benefits, the profits which it expected. So if any unit of the government is not functioning well and it's not reaping good amount to the government, government may think to sell off, sell off those assets or sell off such firms. Secondly, it may think that uh, it, or it might think that if it sells some of the stake to the private player and that private player takes up your firm and runs it, they may be able to run it in a better manner, maybe because they have access to better technology, better resources. And meanwhile, if that asset or property earns good, government having some stake in it will also be able to reap the benefit. So in that case, also government may think to disinvest or there may be some other reasons as well. So let us look out at some more objectives. Other objectives could be like optimization of resources to deliver maximum returns. So if your asset is not getting properly utilized when you are running the business yourself, you may think to sell up the stake to some other private player who might be able to run it in a more better manner. Then we have reducing the financial burden of the government due to inefficient and poor functioning of PSUs. As I've already told you, the uh, firm which the government is running, that may not be reaping you the benefits. It may, so the government may think to sell off, sell off such firm to some other player and reap whatever amount it gets by selling that off. So it will reduce the financial burden because unnecessarily if the government keeps on running such firm which is not giving it the benefits, it, may, it will add on more to the cost and increase the financial burden of the government. Selling them off will, will give some amount to the government which it can utilize for other lucrative purposes. Then it will also help to raise the money to meet specific needs. If government will sell its stake, it will earn something in return. So that amount could be used for other purposes. It will also encourage the private ownership, the entrepreneurial, the entrepreneurial activities, the business, economic growth and development. So it will fund the growth and development programs. Government has to run a number of programs. So if, and if it is unnecessarily wasting its money in some kind of a project, which is not reaping the benefits, there is no point going in for that. So government should sell the stake and use that money for some other growth or development activity. Moreover, it will help the government to depolitize the non-essential services. So government can focus on the core areas by selling off the non-core areas which are of no use or no major importance to the government. So now let's move back to our question and look at the statements mentioned over here. So we have to identify the correct statements. The first statement is reducing the financial burden on the government due to the inefficient and poorly functioning PSUs. So if you disinvest, it will reduce the financial burden. This statement is correct. Second is funding growth and development programs. Obviously, if you disinvest, you will earn some money which you can use for investing in various growth and development programs. This is again correct. Third is to enable the government to focus on core activities and move out of non-core businesses. As I have already told you it, in the last objective which I was discussing that in this way government can sell the non-core areas and focus on the important vital areas which are quite important for the running uh, for basically the economy to stabilize the whole system. 
and last is to retain 100% control and management over the PSU. This is wrong. If the government is thinking that it will retain 100% share, then it will never disinvest. It is disinvesting means it is selling off its share. So uh, uh, maintaining 100% ownership and control cannot be an objective of disinvestment. So which of the following correctly states the objectives? First, second and third. So the answer is option D. Now let's move on to the next question. Question number three says, which of the following statement is or are correct, correctly related to disinvestment? So they are mentioning some statements which are related to disinvestment and you have to answer them. I'll discuss the concept which is covered over here so that you will be able to answer them. If you want to answer it yourself before understanding the concept, you can pause uh, this video and look at the question, the options and try to answer it yourself. Uh, now I'll be discussing the concept which is covered over here and then we'll come back to this question. So what things are covered over here? I've already discussed the concept of disinvestment and privatization with you all. Now I'll be discussing about them a bit more in detail. So there can be different ways in which you can go for disinvestment, different approaches to disinvestment. Let's have a look at it. Firstly, I've already told you that when you are giving up the minority stake, we call it disinvestment. For example, you are selling 20% of the stake. That is an example of disinvestment. Other than that, if you are going in for selling your majority stake. So here you were selling minority stake. What if you sell the majority stake? If you are selling your majority stake, 51% or more stake you are selling. You may sell that to some other public firm or you may sell it to a private firm. Such a sale can also be called as a strategic disinvestment. So you all know that when you are selling a majority stake to private players, we call it privatization. But we may also call it a strategic disinvestment to a private firm. Other than that, such majority share may also be sold to some other public firm. So we'll call that a strategic disinvestment to a public firm. I'll give you one example. The Madras uh, Refineries Limited, its stake was sold to the Indian Oil Corporations, both being a public firm. So this could also be an example where majority of stake is sold to some other public firm for any strategic reasons. So for, for strategic reasons, when the sale of majority stake is made to some other public firm, we call it strategic disinvestment to a public firm. And when you are making that majority stake sale to a private firm, we'll call it strategic disinvestment to a private firm or privatization. Then we have complete privatization. So when you are selling 100% stake to some private firm, that is that you are completely privatizing that firm. So these are three concepts which should be quite clear if you have to answer this question. So now let's read on the statements and try to answer it. We have to identify the correct ones which are correctly related to disinvestment. The first one says that the government wishes to retain the managerial control over the company by maintaining majority stake and selling the remaining stake is an example of disinvestment. So majority stake is with government, minority stake is being given up. So it's, a invest, it's an example of disinvestment. Yes, obviously it's the, defini the definition of disinvestment also says so. The second one is disinvestment when based on strategic grounds and major disinvestments are when done in favor of other public sector enterprises, we call it strategic disinvestment. Yes, it's a strategic disinvestment to a public firm. Then we have privatization refers to the sale of stake by government giving up less than 50% to private enterprise. If less than 50% is given up, that is known as divestment, sorry, disinvestment. That is known as disinvestment and not privatization. So this statement is incorrect. Now we have to identify the correct ones. So only first and second are correct. Thus answer is option B. Now let's move on to next question. 
This question says we center planned to transfer five operational roads worth 5000 crores to the infrastructure investment trust of NHAI and also shift 7000 crore transmission assets to power grids to the power grids infrastructure investment trusts also in the pipeline are for monetization of TFC assets by railways by operational toll roads of Nihai oil and gas pipelines gay of gale Hindustan petroleum warehousing assets and the airports in tier 1 and tier 3 cities so which concept is being talked about over here so what they are doing if you see this very word infrastructure investment trust these are more or less like uh, they are more like your mutual funds so by investing over here you can actually directly invest in you can basically indirectly invest in the infrastructure projects so they work like mutual funds they are an investment option so what they are saying in this question they are talking about that government is planning to monetize some of its areas like that of railways airports your refineries now what is this monetization monetization is basically gaining some monetary value generating some money out of something now government has a lot of assets like it has railways it has roadways it has airports and despite of having such a large amount of assets it's actually not able to utilize them in a proper manner so these assets are underutilized because of which government is not able to earn as much as it could have had so that's why it goes for disinvestment or looks for other options so one alternative to disinvestment could be asset monetization now what is this asset monetization asset monetization is basically generating some monetary value out of the assets you have generating some economic value out of it so government was having a lot of projects with itself railways roadways but they are underutilized government is not able to utilize them properly and reap the gain which it could have had so what it is planning to do is it is planning to go for asset monetization so what it will do it will undertake different steps for example the government can plan to give these things on lease to some private organization now you have a roadway okay you can give it to lease to some private firm it will construct the tolls over there and collect the money from the toll and meanwhile it will provide some payments for of the, for those lease to the government or may share some revenue this way government will be able to gain more because private firm is going to run that and make such unit generate more value which otherwise government won't have for government it won't have been possible to generate moreover it will not only generate the money for the government government will also retain the control and management so government will not sell off its stake like it was doing in privatization or disinvestment it will just think of some other strategy strategy like giving it on lease so by giving it on lease the control will remain with the government it will manage the firm but it will also earn some revenue by providing such a set on lease to other private entities so it's quite a good strategy which government can use as an alternative to disinvestment so that was mentioned this uh, this time uh, if the government has planned to go for such asset monetization scheme where it will it will basically try to monetize the assets like railways the gas pipelines the airports so the answer to this question is asset monetization is the concept which is basically being talked about over here so this was all for today's session i hope you found this session to be useful it's quite important that you understand the term disinvestment privatization asset monetization which are quite trendy terms which you, you might encounter while going through the newspapers these days so this was all for today's session with this i would like to end up this session thank you so much